welcome again in this lecture we are going to talk about the commutator subgroup and its property with the help of the properties of the commutator subgroup we will also determine the commutator subgroup of s3 and q8 so let us start suppose g is a group and if i take two elements a and b of the group g then the commutator of the two elements a and b which is denoted as bracket ab is defined as a inverse b inverse a b in some book it may be written as a b a inverse b inverse that will not affect the theory both are correct but for our purpose we are going to take bracket ab mean a inverse b inverse ab so this bracket ab is called the commutator of element a and b now collect all this commutator and generate a subgroup by it and that subgroup is called commutator subgroup and it is usually denoted as bracket gg so the bracket gg that is the commutator subgroup is defined to be the subgroup generated by set of elements of the form bracket ab that is the commutator of a and b where ab belongs to g and this angle bracket mean subgroup generated by okay we have also introduced this concept of commutator subgroup in the lecture 60 so you can see that lecture for the details and if you want to see the concept of subgroup generated by subset then that concept has been discussed in lecture 6c so you can also see the lecture 6c for the subgroup generated by subset now how the element of this commutator subgroup will look like suppose i take one element g in bracket gg that is g in commutator subgroup then because commutator subgroup is generated by the commutator of the elements so there exist elements a1 a2 an and the elements b1 b2 bn in g such that this g will be the product of commutators a1 b1 a2 b2 up to an bn note one thing that some of these commutators may be equal now a very simple observation suppose i take an element g and a in capital g and now what is g a g inverse into g a inverse g inverse if i calculate this product then this and this will get cancel and then this and this will get cancel and then g and g inverse will get cancel and you will get identity similarly if you will calculate g a inverse g inverse into g a g inverse then you will get identity it simply means that both elements are inverse of each other so we can say that g a g inverse whole inverse is equal to g a inverse g inverse so what is the difference this minus 1 is coming inside as you can see this minus 1 is coming inside so we will use this identity so we prove observed it now come to the observation number 2 suppose i take three elements g a b and g and g a b g inverse can be written as g a inverse b inverse a b g inverse now in between this we can put g inverse a into g in between this we can also again put g inverse g in between this we can put g inverse g and after putting this we will get the same thing because g inverse g is identity now we can make a bracket arrangement we can put this thing in one bracket similarly this thing in one bracket g b inverse g inverse and then g a in g inverse in one bracket and then g b g inverse now by the previous observation we can take this inverse out so we can write this expression like this and now this is nothing but the commutator of g a g inverse and g b g inverse so what is the thing if we take g commutator g inverse this type of elements are called conjugate so if we take the conjugate of commutator ab 
then we are again getting a conjugate we are again getting a commutator so conjugate of a commutator is commutator now come to the next observation suppose i take one element g in bracket gg then as we know because it is generated by commutators so there exist elements a1 a2 a and b1 b2 b n in g such that x can be written as a1 b1 a2 b2 a and b n now take another g in g and calculate g x g inverse so we put g here and we put g inverse and if we put in between them g inverse g then it will not affect the identity so we are going putting g inverse g in between each of these commutators now we can make a bracket arrangement we can take this thing all together because group is associative so we can take bracket like this for each of them and as we have seen in the previous observation this g a1 g b1 g inverse can be written as g a1 g inverse and g b1 g inverse and similarly other so all of these are commutators so product of commutators will be in the commutator subgroup it means g x g inverse is in commutator subgroup but now by the definition of normal subgroup this bracket gg that is commutator of g will be a normal subgroup of capital g now come to the next observation suppose i take a subgroup of g and that subgroup is containing the commutator subgroup that is commutator subgroup is contained in that subgroup suppose i take a subgroup n of g such that the commutator subgroup is contained in n now take one element n in capital n and g in g then what will happen g and g inverse can be written as c and g inverse into n inverse n n inverse n is identity so it will not affect the expression so i multiply it by n inverse n now g and g inverse n inverse is a commutator because it is a commutator so it will belongs to the commutator subgroup commutator subgroup is contained in n so it will also belongs to capital n and this is also an element of capital n because n is a subgroup so their product will be in n so the whole thing will be in in n so it means n is a normal subgroup of g so we have seen that if n is a subgroup of g and commutator is contained in n then that subgroup is normal subgroup so any subgroup containing commutator subgroup is actually a normal subgroup now come to the next observation suppose uh, i take the quotient group g by commutator subgroup now take for any two element ab in g what is a g g and b g g by definition it is a b g g now i multiply this a b g g by b a a inverse b inverse now you can see this is not a commutator this is actually identity a a inverse will give you identity and then b and b inverse will cut and will give you identity so it is just identity element we have multiplied now but one thing we can do is that after multiplying a inverse b inverse ab will give you a commutator so we can write it as commutator ab into gg and because this commutator ab is an element of this subgroup gg so its coset means this coset will be the same as the subgroup so it is equal to gg so b a g g and now by the definition of quotient group it can be written as b g g and a g g and it is true for all ab this is true for all ab in g so it means this g upon g g is an abelian group so g upon g g quotient group is an abelian group so if you will take a group and quotient it by its commutator you will get an abelian group now suppose i take another normal subgroup and g by n so i take another normal subgroup n and g by n is abelian so what will happen by definition an bn is equal to bn an for all ab and g so it means abn will be equal to ban now we can take this b this side means we will multiply both side by b inverse so b will not be here 
it will become identity and b inverse will be here similarly if you multiply a inverse on both the sides then what will happen this element will become a commutator so the commutator a b into n is equal to n n is a subgroup and a b n is equal to n means this element belongs to n so a b belongs to commutator a b belongs to n and this is true for all a b in g so it simply means that the subset commutator a b belongs contained in n and if the sub this subset is contained in n then the subgroup generated by this subset will also be contained in n by the definition of the subgroup generated by subset so this subset this commutator subgroup will be contained in n so this is the conclusion now what what we have done is that if n is a normal subgroup of g and g by n is abelian then this commutator g g is contained in n now one more thing we want to recall from the lecture 60 if you see it after 20 minutes then we have shown that g is abelian if and only if the commutator g g is identity so if we put all these things together then we have a summary that we have done till now g g is identity if and only if g is abelian commutator subgroup is normal subgroup of g any subgroup containing commutator subgroup is normal subgroup and g upon commutator is abelian group commutator is the smallest normal subgroup of g such that g by g g is abelian why we are saying like this because we have taken any normal subgroup g by n is abelian and we have shown that the commutator is contained in n based on these properties mainly these two properties we will find the commutator of q8 and s3 now we will determine the commutator subgroup of s3 so as we know that the s3 is uh, this group and the normal subgroups of s3 are trivial subgroup h1 h2 is equal to identity 1 2 3 1 3 2 and s3 itself so these are three normal subgroups but s3 is non abelian so the commutator subgroup of s3 cannot be h1 that is trivial subgroup so it will be either this subgroup or this subgroup so let us see if we make quotient by h2 then the order of s3 by h2 will be 2 so s3 by h2 is a group of order 2 but group of order 2 is always abelian so s3 by h2 is an abelian group so by our property the commutator of s3 s3 will be contained inside h2 but h2 has only two normal subgroup one is h1 and another is h2 itself so it simply means that the commutator of s3 will be h2 that is identity 1 2 3 and 1 3 2 now if you see the lecture 60 after 23 minute then we have also determined the commutator of s3 in a different way so you can compare both the things and see the two methods of determining the commutator of S three. Now we will determine the commutator subgroup of Q eight. So as we know that the Q eight is the subgroup one minus one i minus i j minus j and k minus k. We know one thing about Q eight is that all the subgroups of Q eight are normal subgroups. So let me list all the subgroups. H one is identity. H two is one minus one i minus one. S three is i. 1 minus 1 j minus j and h4 is 1 minus 1 k minus k h5 is 1 minus 1 which is also equal to the center of q8 and the q8 itself these are all the subgroups and these all subgroups are normal one more thing i would like to mention here that a group in which all the subgroups are normal is called a dedekind group so q8 is an example of a dedekind group now 
this h2 s3 h4 are all the subgroups of order 4 so when we will make a quotient then the quotient group will have order 2 so because order 2 group is a nor is an abelian group it means the commutator subgroup of q8 will be contained inside h2 will be contained inside s3 and will be contained inside h4 that is the commutator subgroup will be contained inside the h2 intersection s3 intersection h4 that is contained in 1 minus 1 so commutator is a subgroup of 1 minus 1 1 minus 1 has two subgroup one is identity subgroup trivial subgroup that is h1 and another is this subgroup itself so commutator is i the trivial or this subgroup itself but as you know that because q8 is non abelian so commutator cannot be trivial so the commutator of q8 will be this subgroup itself if you want to cross verify it and want to see whether quotient by this subgroup is an abelian group or not so you make you may make a quotient of q8 by 1 minus 1 you will get h5 ih5 gh5 kh5 where h5 is this subgroup 1 minus 1 and you can see that this quotient is abelian if you calculate ih5 into gh5 you will get kh5 and similarly gh5 into ih5 so you can make this calculation so this is an abelian group so the commutator of q8 is actually equal to the center of q8 that is 1 minus 1 thank you